All right, I'll read two poems. This is called Heading Towards Spring. It's only the first week of February, but hundreds of reasons for hope have already arrived. Sweet crocuses, slender and seemingly delicate, push their way up through cold, hard earth in mid-January, assembling themselves all over our parkway and path the lawn, unfolding their white and lavender bodies to bask in the sun. Cars stop. People look out their side windows. They can't see me, but I can read their smiles and smile too. When the sky goes gray or night falls, the crocuses fold themselves up so tightly that their white and lavender disappear. They wrap up well if it snows, like it did two days ago. Yesterday, when the sun rose high and the snow melted, there they were, the crocuses, standing straight up exposing their beauty again, those white and lavender voices singing to all who have ears to hear, such hymns of praise, of hope, rebirth, and joy. For nearly 30 years, these harbingers, these warriors, these priests and priestesses have trained me well. And I, too, push my way through the cold news of the day, the hard earth of my many years, and lift my voice to join them in song. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this next poem, The Rest Can Wait, um, I had gotten a uh, a book of Mary Oliver's dog poems, and I love them. They, they really tickle me. And one of the techniques that she uses in some of her poems is a speaking voice for the dogs. And I thought, gosh, I want to try that. So that's what I did in this. The rest can wait. He taps my leg gently while I eat breakfast or read the news, or pay the bills. When I work on a poem, he taps me. His taps are accompanied by short, soft whining. His eyes hold me with pure intention. I tell him I'm busy right now, but I'll be ready in a little while. He asks, what's a while? About ten minutes, I say. Of course, not knowing what ten minutes mean, he returns quickly, bearing a squeaky, furry, beige bunny, which he drops at my feet. Now, he asks, bright with anticipation. No, not quite yet, Remington. You need to wait. A minute later, after rummaging through his toys, he returns with a soft red rubber ball that also squeaks, the squeaky toys being his favorites. Does this interest you, he asks. Yes, but not quite yet, Remy. Please, let me finish. But I want you to get down on the floor and play with me now. You're forgetting I'm a teenager, in dog years that is, and part Jack Russell to boot. I have boundless energy, and our big walk won't happen till shadows grow long. Please play with me now, please. So I push my bowl aside, or turn off my tablet, or put down my pen. <coughs> You're right, Remy. It is time to play. And I wrestle away his soft red ball and squeeze it once, twice, and again. His eyes, pools of joyful fire, 
as i sail that ball.